Exodus 23:25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. The Lord bless his word. Please take care of every sound. Ushers, please. Our objective is to understand kingdom service first, then to understand the dimensions of kingdom service second. And then to understand keys to acceptable and profitable service. Third. And then to understand the profit of service. The Bible made it clear that two major Actions confirm man's dedication to God. According to Matthew chapter 4 verse 10 and also Luke chapter 4 verse 8 Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence. That word reverence is also used for worship. So we have two assignments in our dedication. Number one is worship and number two is service. Worship and service. A man can only confirm that he is successful in life by the extent of his worship and service of God. Not how much money. Progress in the direction of God is progress in the right direction. Nobody is making progress who is not progressing with God. You measure your success in life by your success with God. People may clap, at, clap for you and say you have succeeded. But success with God equals success indeed. We shall be looking at service in today. Service is not just an ordinary activity where somebody says, let me just do something to help church or help God. Service is a walk of covenant. Service to God is a walk of covenant. 
you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. It's a covenant. There is something you do and God does something. Let me say it like this. When your commitment to God is confirmed, your consignment from God is guaranteed. It is commitment from man versus consignment from God. You shall serve the Lord, your God, and he shall bless your bread and your, wat and your water. Say it another way. Your interest in God equals your harvest from God. There are people who want harvest from God where they show no interest in God and his work. There are people who are expecting consignment from heaven where they show no commitment to heaven's assignment. It doesn't work. Since I started following God with passion, I have not ha had to ask for a cloth or a car or a house. Even when we were pastoring for over 13 years with, 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 and living in rented houses, no need to ask. If I ever ask God for something, it is for more spiritual wiring to serve him better. You shall serve and he shall bless. Please, let's leave the realm of just asking God for things and move into the realm of doing things that will commit God to do what he's meant to do. You, there are things you do with God, you don't need to beg him to do what he's meant to do. It's a covenant. Having said that, what is service? I have to be fast because of time. In the first service I said that service involves running the errand. Okay, Service involves waiting on the master for instructions and command. Here am I. And me. Here am I. Send me as the Lord needs somebody. Here am I. Send me. I will go. Send me. and command. Number two, service involves running the errands on the run for Jehovah. Number three, service involves identifying and meeting the needs of the master. We use the Shunammite woman meeting the needs of the man of God as an example of kingdom service. 
Number four, we said service involves making a difference in the world of the master. You are not just in church for nothing. You made a difference. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Use me, Lord. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Use me. Identifying and meeting the needs of the master. Number four, service involves making the difference in the world of the master. And number five, service involves filling the vacuum in the assignment of the master. Vacuums. Where can I be of use? Where oh, he leads me. I will go in the army where he leads me I will go in the army where he leads me I will go in the army I'm a soldier in the army Man saw a vacuum in the life of the prophet Elisha. She filled the vacuum. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 9. You don't allow vacuum to exist where you are in the house of God. Finally, service involves addiction to the satisfaction of the master. You are addicted. You want to you you want to please him. Addiction to the satisfaction of the master. Acts chapter sixteen, chapter nine, chapter nine, verse six. On the way to Damascus, Paul the apostle was asking, "Lord, what will you have me do? What do you want me to do?" available what do you want me to do what do you want me to do you are addicted you want to do something for God you are on fire on addicted that is service what are the dimensions of service that you can have number one is service with one's ability or capability. Serving God with what you can do. What you know how to do. With your capability, with your ability. With all the strength and all the talent and potential you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 said, Therefore whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with your might. 
That is, you give your might to the work of God. Everything, everything you have got. Paul the apostle said, I have held, I have kept nothing back that was profitable. I fully release myself to God. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, please handle. Epaphras who is one of you a servant of Christ saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect that is you put your everything you have got is pushed into God physical ability Mental ability. Spiritual ability. That is, there is nothing you know how to do that God needs that he will lack. Nothing. Nothing you know how to do. No wisdom in any realm you carry that God needs and he has to beg you for it. Service with one's ability. With one's talent and potential. Number two is service with one's resources. Serving God with your finances, with your money. We read earlier on in Psalm 22, verse 30, he said, A seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted unto him for a generation. Chronicles chapter 29 verse 5 to 7. David was speaking to the elders of Israel. How he allocated the gold for the things of gold. And the silver for the things of silver. And for all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artificers. He said, and who then is willing to consecrate his service? He was talking of giving silver and gold and he was talking of service to the Lord. Verse 6. Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God five of gold, 5,000 talents, 10,000 drums, Silver, 10,000 talents. Brass, 18,000 talents. And 100,000 talents of iron. They give for the service. It is not possible to be committed to service and not be sacrificial in giving. It's not possible. Committed service goes hand in hand with sacrificial giving. Not possible. I am a pastor preaching. I don't have any other life other than ministry. I don't have another life. Some people even think we don't eat or we don't have the right to eat. We don't have the right to be tired. For example, after the fasting and prayer in the evening, there will still be a line of people waiting. Now, as much as we have donated ourselves to that extent, it doesn't exclude the release of finances that he brings our way into the work. It is part of our service. I can't say now that I have given myself to God. Any, I don't need to give money anymore to God. It is other people that can give now. Nothing like that. Am I communicating? God is helping myself and my wife who are building a church now. It should be completed very soon. And then we'll pick up another one, pick up another one. And God has used us to do such things. Not just for Dunamis Church, Methodist Church. Just like that, across board. But there are people who say, I'm, I'm serving God enough. When it is offering time, the basket is passing, no need. Even there are pastors who take offering and they don't give offering. 
There are pastors who preach tight and they don't pay tight. They are the Melchizedek. All of you give the Lord, but my, but my hand will remain empty. I told some people, some, time, some pastors some time ago during the pastor's meeting. I said, if there is anybody in the church that is more interested in the church than you, is giving more rapidly, more frequently, towards the work, more passionately, that person is a real pastor. Hand over the church to him. Because, the, because no other person right there is meant to be more interested and more passionate about something you said God called you to do. Hallelujah. Our, our, our giving is part of our kingdom service. Having said that, how do we serve God effectively? Because I have a lot of people, I've come across many people who say, I've been serving God for 20 years. I've been going to church for 30 years. It looks like some people come newly and just see results. I've been going to church. I've, I've been serving God for long. Nothing to show. Maybe there may be some checklist. I was in the aircraft traveling someday and the pilot called me and said, please come to our cockpit. Come to our cockpit. Come. Come to our office. And I entered where you have all the things here, 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 here that they pull before they fly. Please pray for us and so on and so forth. And I saw a list of almost 30 something things. I said, what is this? He said, it is called checklist. He said, before you take the aircraft from the ground, you must mark all of it until all is correct. You can't take off. That is, whatever, landing gear in place, whatever, whatever, you have to check and checklist. Even if one thing is, is not correct, you are flying at your own expense. And at the danger of other lives. Because there is no mechanic in the air. That's one of the number one law in aviation. Always remember that there is no workshop in the air. Praise the Lord. In the same manner, we may have a checklist in our kingdom service. To be sure that we fly and fly well. To be sure that we are not assuming that things are correct. And number one, acceptable and profitable service, number one, service must be done heartily and lovingly. You don't serve a God you don't love. You don't serve a God with whom your heart is not. Heartily, lovingly. You love him so much you want to do, what can I do? Number two, service must be done willingly. Whenever it looks like somebody is putting you under pressure to serve God, that service is a, an unrewardable service. You are doing it because the head of the department is on your neck or because pastor said this and that and you are doing it grub, grudgingly and murmuringly. It is rewardless. Thirdly, service must be done joyfully. Serve the Lord with gladness. According to Psalm 100 verse 2, with gladness, excitedly. Happy doing the work of evangelism. Excited doing the work of ushering. Excited doing the work of music ministry. Excited controlling the traffic. Not frowning and angry at everybody. Number four, service must be done fervently and passionately. These are things we dealt with in the previous services. Fervently, passionately, on fire for God. Not lukewarm water, on fire for God. Number five, service must be done in sincerity and truth. Don't be crooked. Don't be crooked. Don't look suspicious in your service. Don't look like you have another thing in your mind. You don't join the department because you want to find a wife or a husband there. Number six, service must be done in humility. 
humility. Every braggadocious, arrogant service is a rewardless service. Lucifer's service terminated with pride. And he became the king of hell. Humility. You are a billionaire, but clean, clean the, 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 the floor. If, if, as God leads you to such a department. And relate with the unemployed young man. Relate with him. Calm down. But we say, who, who, who make it to be, diff to, di to be different from another? Talk, no, you don't talk like, is it because we are in the same church? If you see me in my office, can you talk to me like that? That's, that, that, that renders that service very useless. We are brethren. We are brethren. We are brethren. We are brothers and we are sisters. Service must be done in humility. Nobody knows who you are or what you have the capacity of doing or that you are a billionaire or a top ranking. I saw one of our young ladies here the other day. Very, very fervent, very, very passionate, very, 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 very active in church. Just, and then she came up. I have a little offering for you, sir. And they gave her. I said, so what do you do? So she's a consultant physician. And that is our field. Consultant cardiologist, you, you. Really. That is, you study Dr. Sete, you have finished the first level when the, the, you became a physician specialized in the heart. The mingo, and you, you are the everybody, you know. And I, I felt comfortable that that is how life should be. You may be anything, but nobody is aware. You are in the same department with the person who just finished secondary school. And you are able to talk at the same level on the basis of the work of God. It must be done in humility. Number seven, service must be done in uprightness and godly fear. The fear of God. You are not lying and duping and cheating and deceiving and defrauding people and then they come to church and see you standing and welcoming them to church meanwhile you drank beer with them yesterday at the beer joint that is terrible it must be done in uprightness and godly fear not with compromise otherwise you be you can be in church for donkey years no no result number eight Service must be devoid of eye service and men pleasing. Service to God. You are not doing it for, for, for a man to see. You are not doing it for a human being to tell you thank you. There are people who complain and murmur all the time. I have been in church all this while. Nobody even recognizes that I'm there. All this labor, all this effort. Nobody is, is telling me thank you. If, you see, if a human being tells you thank you, you have received your reward. Be between the thank you of man and the thank you of God, which one do you prefer? I don't care whether a man thanks me. All I want is my father at the end of my journey to say well done and welcome. Thou good and faithful servant. That's all. At the end of my reign when I see Into the night, all that was prepared for me. I've seen love that could not be quantified. Again, body and body of my When I see a blessed face, when I shall have that. The when I step, when I step into the world, show that was prepared. I'll see love, I'll see love, that cannot be possible.
is when we see his face and say, well done, well done. Doesn't matter who thanks you. It must be devoid of eye service. Number nine, service must be done with the end in mind. The end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 to 24. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. He said, we all shall appear. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. The way and manner in which I am doing this pastoring work, one day I will stand before God to give account of what I preached and how I conducted the assignment what I did with the money <laughs> right whether I used it for him or used it for me one day one day every church worker will be before God what was your work so what was your input in your assignment so how did you so why did you decide to be the problem of that department why did you decide to be the reason why that place could not go forward every one of us. So, we must serve with the end in mind. Serve as someone who will one day give account. Some days I tell God everything I know how to do is what I am doing. If there is anything you want me to do that I'm not doing is because I'm not aware. Please let me know. With the consciousness that one day will give account. Number 10, service must be done faithfully. Faithfully. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. He said, Let a man so account of us as ministers of, the, of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in a servant, in stewards, that a man be found faithful. Be found faithful. Your faithfulness is superior to your powerfulness. Let me say it another way. Your reliability is more important than your capability. Hmm. Matthew chapter 25 verse 23. He said, at the end, his Lord will say to him, well done. Thou good and powerful servant. Is that what he said? Thou good and talented servant. Thou good and highly anointed servant. Thou good and very, very skillful servant. Hmm. Good and faithful servant. In, in the kingdom, reliability rates higher than capability. Say that again. In God's kingdom, your reliability rates higher than your capability. Being dependable is more, is more appealing to God than being even anointed or powerful. Let me say this to you. God prefers a faithful person to a powerful person. He prefers a committed person to a talented person. There are many talented voices in church who are singing for the devil in the world now. They left, they left church and went to the world. And why, why, why is that so? If you are committed but not talented, God can impart you. If you can find commitment, he will impart you with ability. So that he can merge your, your, your reliability to divine capability so you can have unusual productivity. You hear what I said? If you have reliability 
and lack capability, God can impart you the capability to merge with the reliability so you can produce unusual productivity. Yes. I talk from experience. There are many things I do today that I never did many years ago. I had the heart to worship God, but not the voice of singing as at 20, 30 something years ago. I was in the choir, all right, but just one of the members of the choir at that time. When you are reliable, God can make you capable. But when but when you are capable and not reliable, there is nothing God can do with you. Nothing. He just leaves you alone and just go ahead. And hear this. Reliability. Capability. Without reliability ends in calamity. If you doubt, ask Satan. He was capable, he wasn't reliable. He had, he had instruments in his body. His workmanship was tablets and pipes. The flapping of Satan's wings was music. But he got too proudful to serve God and stepped out and was no longer reliable. Calamity was his end. He was found in hell. Don't ever complain that you, you are not gifted. Just be committed. Very soon you will be shocked at your gifting. Because there is nothing God cannot do. If he can turn water into wine, what, what can he not turn a person into? If he can make a donkey to prophesy, what can he not make out of you? If he can turn dust into person, he molded dust and turn it into person, what will he not turn somebody who is already a person into? Somebody say amen. That is why many people say, I've been in church, but I haven't seen results. Are you faithful? Are you dependable? Are you there when you are meant to be there? Service is almost finished before you, you entered. Message has gone halfway. You just came in. And then you went out not knowing what was preached. You only came to clarify your conscience that you came to church. Departmental meeting, you walk in anytime you want. Nobody can talk to you. Because you are doing both God and church favor by being in choir or counseling or being in the prayer band and God is watching. You see, this kind of person, I don't need you. Your presence is adding nothing. Is God speaking to somebody here? It must be done faithfully. Number 11, service must be done obediently. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and out of their obedience they serve him, then they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. We'll look at that next week, Sunday. But obedience and service, they go hand in hand. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 4 talks about obedience. It talks about service. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him. Obey. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? This is how you will do it. He places in your heart to do this and that. You obey. Obedience. Obedience of instructions. And finally, service must be done from the place of intimacy with God. I congratulate you in this last service because this is like the bottom part of the, of the message. Numbers chapter 16 verse 9. He said, God was talking to the sons of Levi. Cement it but a small thing to you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself. So that you can do the service of the tabernacle. God brings people near himself first. Before he makes them to do things for him. In 
Mark chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. The Bible said concerning Jesus, he goeth into the mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him and he ordained twelve that they should go and do ushering. He ordained twelve that they should join choir. That which is not wrong. He ordained twelve that they should become pastors and apostles. What did he ordain them to do? That they should be with him. And after that, that he might send them. Between being with him and being sent, which one is more compulsory? That they should be with him, but in the other case, he might. God did not create Adam because he was looking for a gardener. He created Adam because he was looking for a partner. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? He put man in the garden of Eden to partner with him. The assignment of the Eden is a secondary assignment. Intimacy is superior to activity. But intimacy marries activity. And like we have said, you see productivity. Never allow activity to take the place of intimacy with God. Activity for God should never take the place of intimacy with God. Don't do the work of the Lord and you don't know the Lord of the work. Am I communicating? There are two things that we need. Walking with God. And walking for God. But walking with God must come before walking for God. You don't do the work of the Lord and forget the Lord of the work. It's as if the woman is so busy with what the husband provided for her that she forgot the relationship with the husband who provided everything. Am I communicating? Your prayer life, your study of the word, your fasting, your worship must be in place. Then your service becomes impactful. It must be in place. It must be in place. You are a worshiper. You are, you, are, you are a faster. You are a student of the world. And then while you stand as an usher, you stand loaded. Standing in the place of intimacy with God. Wherein if a demon possessed man step in to misbehave, he looks at your eyes, the demon will run out of his leg. You know? Let me give you an example of intimacy and activity. When we were medical students, some of our medical students uh, in the class, they would go for evangelism in the ward. And some went to psychiatry ward. No, mad people's ward. To preach. And as they came to preach, the, one madman looked at one of, the, of them. He said, oh, you two, you are coming. Other people are coming, you are coming to you. The person reversed. <laughs> because the devil knew, knew her spiritual weight. He knew the capacity. You, know, you are not permitted to be around here. These people can do evangelism. They are on fire. They, have, they are working with God. You, who are you working with? That is the difference between walking for God and walking with God. Please, 
Don't be the caterer that forgot to eat. Don't be the signboard that didn't enter the hall. Pointing direct people the way to the venue but has never entered the venue. Don't be that usher. Don't be that traffic control officer. Don't be that, that choir member. Don't be that counselor who is making, doing their best to make people comfortable in church and know God and yet they don't know God for themselves. Stand up on your feet.